Hi, my name is John Smith with Extra Hop Networks. I am a solution architect and I want to talk a little bit today about the new Citrix bundle and this is the dashboard portion of that bundle. Um, some of the metrics will vary depending on what you need. This is just a quick dashboard I put together to accompany the Citrix bundle um, with the new 4.0 dashboard capabilities. So. Looking at the dashboard, the first thing you see is just a quick text box. In here, we're able to put critical information, such as, you know, here, alert the pager for subnet latency over 300 milliseconds. Reboot servers with more than one 1030 error. Call the help desk if the CEO has high latency. All of these things are kind of important here. We have the on-call pager, maybe some customer support information. Just something real quick so that if you have operations staff that, that maybe doesn't have a lot of Citrix experience, we're able to kind of give them sort of the the experience of your senior level folks by coming here, putting some instructions in, and then giving them some metrics with instructions on how to act on those metrics. So we'll get into the metrics real quick. Uh, the first one here on the left is the ICA latency by subnet. So a lot of organizations will geospatially organize their campus or their enterprise by subnet ID or by network ID. So what we've done here is carve up the networks of the individual ICA users into 24-bit masks. And here you're able to see the performance of each one of these. And so let's say this is, you know, you know these are remote users because this is the VPN or the NetScaler. Uh, here this may be, you know, an MPLS network, something along those lines. This can be really relevant when you're trying to troubleshoot. Let's say you have an SLA that you don't think is being met for an MPLS remote office that's trying to connect to Citrix, or you want to investigate that, or maybe you have a switch that's overheating in an MDF. Those are all things that are really relevant, and this can kind of point you in the direction maybe if there is a problem geospatially within your environment, we should be able to find that by subnetting the, the data and, and being able to kind of represent holistically how each network or how, he, how each floor, campus, or MPLS remote office is performing. On the right hand side here we have users with latency of over 300 milliseconds and so what we're looking at here we see Alex M the CEO that I mentioned earlier at the top with high latency uh, but we see high latency so my experience and with most Citrix admins has been that once the latency traverses 300 milliseconds, you start to see the type of head delays, you start to get complaints. My experience is that around 500 milliseconds, the users will walk away from the session. So essentially in some, these are kind of the users that are about to call the help desk. And it lets you kind of be a little bit more proactive. Here we've included their client IP in case there's a problem with a particular network. And we've also included the server that it's on. So for anyone that's ever had a, a user, you know, especially a teleworker, you'll be able to go in here and we'll cover that in the drill downs and you can say hey yes your your latency is 791 milliseconds but everyone else on that server has 20 milliseconds of latency no we're not going to come to your house and fix your wireless network those are some of the scenarios that Citrix administrators are constantly put in the next one we're in is uh, the next one down is the um, sort of a canary in the coal mine, right? The XML broker performance. And what we've done is we've kind of monitored the XML. This, this is monitoring outside of the ICA channel. So we offer a holistic monitoring solution. I'm covering mostly Citrix, but we can also monitor the downstream uh, performance of database queries, you know, websites, that kind of stuff. Here we're looking at the actual XML broker performance by, by looking at that particular URL. And my experience here is that high high metrics here, three digit metrics or 400, 500 milliseconds, you'll get complaints like all of my apps haven't populated or the launches are really slow and you'll get also general slow performance. So the XML broker, what it does is it takes your logon credentials and hands them off to Active Directory for authentication. So again, the canary in the coal mine, this could be an indication of Active Directory issues. This could be an issue of you don't have dedicated XML brokers. So the Zen, servers get, Zen app server is getting hammered and its ability to broker XML connections is hindered. But this can be just an indication of overall problems. So it's kind of a nice metric to have. The next one is the current active session count. So we interrogate the wire. We're a little bit different. We're counting, and again, this is demo data, so I don't have a lot of data in here. But we, we basically, we interrogate the wire. 
So this will differ from what you see on the console. This is the number of active users who are sending data across the wire. So we're interrogating the wire. Don't be shocked if this number is not the same as what you see on the console. The Citrix console or some of the PowerShell tools, they interrogate servers. ExtraHop is interrogating the wire. Here we have the overall ICA launch time, something you just might want to keep track of. You know, if a domain controller dies, something like that, you could have slow launches or, or somebody has a, you know, copies an ISO, a five gig ISO image to their roaming profile desktop. So this is just the overall launch time. And then over here on the right, we have the ICA launch time by application in milliseconds. And if you notice everything's, you know, under 30 seconds, um, you know, I like to be under 10 if I can do it, uh, but sometimes that's tough. Some applications may have wrappers or CMD files or PowerShell scripts that are launching them. And so you kind of can take that, you know, with, with, uh, into consideration when you're evaluating the overall application launch time. We can also include the server launch time, the launch time by user, and the launch time by subnet if you want. The next one is just a little bit of information on slow launches. So here, if you mouse over, you'll see the user ID, the application, what server they launched it from, uh, the application from, as well as the client IP and client name. So this is just to give you a little bit of detail on the slow launches and who had them. On the right-hand side is another example of how we tap into the XML. So outside of the ICA channel, we actually have noticed that when you get a 1030 error, or in some cases a protocol driver error. Um, and, and in the past, what I've had to do is publish Notepad on a bunch of servers and keep launching them until I found out which server, you know, gives me the protocol driver error or the 1030 error. Well, that can be kind of maddening in larger environments. So what we've done is we were actually able to see the uh, a piece of data in the XML and we're able to parse that out and increment a counter whenever that happens. So now when you get users saying, hey, I'm getting a 1030 error, I'm getting a protocol driver error, I can't launch my application, you'll be able to find out quickly which server is the problem. The next one here is the uh, slow versus normal. We've set that this is arbitrary. We've set this to anything over 30 seconds is considered slow. Anything under 30 seconds is considered acceptable. This number will vary depending on your applications and your organization. So these are some of the things that, that, you, that can easily be customized, customized within the triggers. Here we just give you a high level view really quickly. And next one, this one is actually pretty cool. So this is, this is us tapping into the ICA channel. So here we're looking at the printing channel. We have a user ID. We have the server they did it on in case you get a complaint about a slow server. And we get the ICA channel. We can actually drill into this a little bit. Um, here, so we have a variety of, of channels that we can look into. You have audio there on the right. We'll cover that in a minute. But we can cover the uh, multimedia. There's the multimedia channel. Um, we can see the drive. In one of my past Citrix lives, we actually had Sorry, we actually had SAS developers that didn't like to use the Citrix version of SAS because all their macros lived on their desktops. So they would do what we jokingly called FTP over ICA. They would actually copy these six and seven gig SAS data sets from, through the ICA channel, bringing it to their local computer so that they could work with it when they were off site. And that sort of created some bandwidth constraints and that caused some problems. If I had had extra hop at the time, I would have been able to see that, right? If somebody copies a 50 meg file, if someone tries to steal intellectual property, we would be able to see that through the ICA drive. For this one, we're looking at printing. So, sorry, that's called printer. So we're looking at the printer channel here. And so we're just looking at users that have sent print jobs. If somebody sends a humongous print job, uh, you know, a 50 meg print job to a plotter, you know, it will, you'll be able to see what they're doing here and see the impact. And on the right hand side here, we're looking at the audio channel. So this channel is, is relevant. Sometimes um, when you publish IE, users will not realize that that's the Citrix IE and go to some personal websites or maybe some, maybe not really work relevant websites. Um, in the past, I've seen people, uh, offshore developers where they block Spotify because the bandwidth is expensive. They may try to launch Spotify from their Zen desktop session or their VDI session or Zen app. So that would show up here. That would manifest itself here in the audio channel and you would be able to kind of police that. So this is the idea 
we have a myriad of Citrix metrics. I can't really cover all of them, but I wanted to give you an idea of just how, how easy it is to do dashboards in the new 4.0 platform and, and kind of leverage the breadth of, of the gigantic breadth of Citrix metrics that we're able to collect. Thank you very much, and, and we will now record uh, a few sessions on um, the drill downs. Thanks a lot.